so we obviously spent time with you and uh, Jay yesterday. So explain the living situation setup. Okay, everybody is gonna want to live exactly the same way. It does sound kind We're, of amazing. <laughs> right now we live in a, a building that has three units. So I live on the top floor and Jay lives on the first floor. And so there's, you know, a couple that live in between us. So we're, we live together, we're at the same address, except I'm unit three and he's unit one. We don't really want to change anything because, you know, I like my space and I have my schedule and he likes his space and he has his schedule. But we're, you know, I can, you know, take the elevator down in my slippers and, you know, hang out a little bit and go back up. And I would recommend it to any couple that feels the same way. It's like, all right, I'm gonna go upstairs. Like, okay. I mean, we see each other every morning, every afternoon and every night. When you're home alone in your bed, it's like, the guys are gross. <laughs> like, we just make sounds. Like, we sweat, the, the sheets get all wrinkly and weird. It's like, oh, just let her sleep like a princess or a Barbie still in the box. Like, there's no, she doesn't need to be subjected to me in my, like, wrestling sweatpants, just belching in my, like, you know. What made you realize the relationship was serious? There was just something about him when I first met him that drew me to him. And even with all our ups and downs, I could always see his heart and who he was. So I, you know, just fell in love. It's kind of the greatest thing that ever happened to me. You know, I, I remember when we met, I had a sports talk radio show at the time and I interviewed her and I completely, over the phone, and I completely imagined that there was a vibe, like just complete narcissist run amok. I was like, oh, this is totally a thing. So then I went and I DM'd her on Twitter and I said, you know, I have a podcast. It'd be great if you came on the podcast and she agreed to do my podcast but I wasn't prepared for falling in love the moment I saw her. Like, I remember her coming off the elevator. It was a green elevator, palm tree carpet, because I was staying at a hotel at the time, and I, it was slow motion, just, whoa. Very unexpected. And what was it that really hit you? I mean, the fact that she can walk in slow motion, I thought <laughs> that was pretty odd. I didn't know I wanted someone like that in my life, my entire life, until that person walked into my life. And then when they walk into your life, everything, every struggle, every argument prior to, with anyone else, and every battle, and every heartbreak, it just, none of it matters, none of it makes sense, and you just, you just wanna start this life right away. So I just didn't let her out of my sight from that moment on. Our next comedian, you know, from Saturday Night Live, and uh, Sharon McGuire. Let's get something out of the way. You guys, you guys don't look the same either, okay? <laughs> What's it like watching this guy on stage, Jeannie? Oh, I, I'm, I'm just so um, amazed at how smooth he is. And, and some nights, it's almost like he's walking on water. Like, his set will just be... Like, he, he doesn't even have to take a breath. The audience has to take a breath, but he just keeps, like, right on that level. It's, it's really uh, phenomenal. You're very sweet. It's weird, though, because it's not, it's not a skill set. It's a, it's a presence. Because I'm on stage having, like, a complete dialogue with myself. And really? I, like, I never hear nothing. I'm like, it's, there's always somebody's just going, repeating a punchline back or a waitress saying excuse me or the ice machines clacking and you know, flopping and whatever. But it, it's, it's always a cacophony, like a carnival of sounds. And it's just my job to just throw it all into one net and just manage it. I, I, I used to say like it's, it's like throwing a net in the ocean. There's, there's 300 people in the audience. You just gotta hold all 300 and then after an hour goes by, you're like, ah, now you can go. <laughs> These Bigfoot assholes, they just, and if you're out there, you need to just stop and stop trying to believe that Bigfoot is real. I, you guys are idiots, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've seen seahorses 
a mile under the sea in the Marianas Trench, a male seahorse explode babies out of its belly, a man giving birth to baby seahorses underwater. But you can't get me a video of like an 11 foot Great Dane walking on its hind legs, knocking over garbage cans. <laughs> I'm just, I'm such a fan of his, and I'm a fan of stand-up, because I think stand-up is like the most fearless thing that you can do. That it's like, there is no, nothing pr to hide behind, nothing to protect you from the audience. It's just, it's going up there and burying your soul and bringing people in. And um, I think that's what's powerful about comedy and that it's so useful in our society to help us move past things that are challenging and that might be uncomfortable to talk about. And you uh, took uh, comedy classes on a couple yes. of occasions. I think you went to two classes and you quit, yes. but then you came back a number of years later and did it again. Uh, w what was the benefit you found in that? Um, you know, I, I get asked to speak publicly a lot and I'm a terrible public speaker. I get extreme, oh, I, I, I am, I'm, I get extremely self-conscious. I have stage fright and um, I was talking to um, someone and they, they recommended this class. It's called Pretty Funny Women and uh, it, it helped me a lot and you know, I would recommend it to anybody. And you know, how, how often can you be at my age where you can learn something new and challenge yourself and, and you know, come out on the other side? What was it like for you uh, watching her open for you? I was terrified. <laughs> Were you? Yeah, because if she stinks, it's like, oh no. And then she was great. And somebody, you know what happened is somebody gave her a, a giant bouquet of roses. Mm -hmm. And so she did her whole set holding this giant bouquet of roses. And she had lived like, like she was Miss Pasadena. <laughs> and it was just, it all worked. And I was like, you should just always do like comedy or public speaking holding a giant bouquet of roses. It looks appropriate with you. Right, it could be my thing.